Okay, we have our, our, our most favorited 2005 Chrysler Town & Country that's been run on a budget and now it's been paid off and the people who own it want to get it fixed up. So I'll show you what we got. Um, if only I just unlock it even more. Um, so basically it has a leaky radiator. It's one of those plastic tank ones, so go figure. So we have that. We're going to check and make sure it's the right one here in a sec. We have, let's see, this I think is a water pump. We have a wheel bearing, an EGR valve, and a thermostat, and some Gabriel Hijacker air shocks. We uh, decided to go with those because, um, well, they do a lot of... Uh, camping and whatnot so this thing needs to have some support and that's probably why the rear shocks are pretty much gone on it I mean it it's it's not bad bad but it's when you when you when you back out of the driveway and then put it into drive you can feel the back end go do that and then rock a little bit and it just it handles terribly and it needs a little bit of help so we got new shocks but they're gonna be air gonna be great I'm gonna do these right now this is what we'll do for this video um, okay so if you're having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how to get these extended it's just that when they're collapsed all the way they're kind of locked these don't have a strap and they're not uh, they're just hydraulic they're not gas charged I don't know if I remember it serves me right because uh, since you have it's an air shock uh, because you're, the way the air spring works, you want your uh, shock to be um, a slow uh, extend. And this one doesn't necessarily extend on its own, which is okay. But, and the good thing is it's very nice and stiff. Um, this van, I think, trucks should have, trucks and vans should have fairly stiff suspension. I know you can get them pretty stiff without them being right and hard or anything but here's how I'm gonna do I'm just stick my little air gun in here there we go and then you know once you get that undone collapse it all the way Just, you know, give it a couple times to prime. And you can pretty much just leave it however you want. What's nice about these is that we won't be fighting these when we go to put them in, so we can pretty much adjust them how we want. So, you know, these look nice. I'm debating on whether I should put some of these on my truck, even though I have airbags. This will, having an adjustable shock will help, uh, Help aid your airbags, so I think maybe we'll have a double redundancy in air suspension. Alright. Jack it right on the leaf spring. Or actually, I'll just jack it on the shock mount because I can't get my jack quite in there. See what's going on, then we'll get to check our rear brakes. I believe this one's disc. Okay. That way. 
Now there is advantage to having a solid rear axle, you can do stuff like that. Three quarter. Oh, I'm good. I'm a jigger. Yeah, it came out without it being a pain in the ass. <clears throat> Of course, my socket. Let's get my thing. I'm gonna take our wheel. Put that underneath the car. And ah. Oh, we need rear brakes. Rotor looks okay. Shocks aren't too hard to get to. Looks like it's a through, through and through at the bottom, and just a a bolt. It looks like it's riding on the bump stops a lot. Okay. I need to retrieve this. All right, it looks like it's going to metric, so. Let's see. 17 millimeter. 18. Is it 18 millimeter? So 18 millimeter bolt and nut, top and bottom. Okay, here we go. That came out without a hitch. Yeah, that's not what I want to do. Ah, my knee. <sighs> There's our old crappy shock absorber. Oh yeah, these things are done. I can squish this by hand. Look at that. Old Chrysler shocks. This is just a regular suspension. Nothing fancy, so if you do have the fancy something rather in Nevo Matte suspension, you will want to buy the 230 some dollar shock absorbers for this. And I believe that you can mount these any way you want. Uh, personally, I'm going to have the air fitting sticking up instead of versus that way where your cable or your air hose is going down that way. So, we want to avoid that. So, in our favor, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. these are stiff. So, come in just like this. We need a baby hammer. You may, to, may need to gently persuade that in there. Okay, that's in. I pretty much have this at a normal right height. So I'm going to tighten these down. They're actually easy to adjust. I right, still get that in there. We'll use this for the bottom one. I got that. Ah! Oh, this fan's gonna kill me. Here's my nose off. 
Oh, it's like bad. There, if the van falls, it falls on the tire. Might bend the rim, but you know, I got spare rims. <laughs> For a Mazda, but whatever. Yeah, they're, they're down to minimum thickness. That's okay, it's another video. Wrong way. Wrong hole. <laughs> okay. I might need to be the be the be the be I'm gonna sneak the big gun in here. Can I get it in that nut? No. Can I get it in here? Okay. Whew. I did it. Grab it. Oh boy, we're so lucky this is not a... Uh, Freaking rust belt vehicle, because man, this would just be a nightmare. Shock absorber. Can't even hear it do anything. And look, look, it's just. Comparing it to our hydraulic shocks, there's not much we can do. It's a different setup. Again, installing these with the air valve with the air fitting up and I am leaving the wheels off because then we're going to route our air hose route our hose okay and this pretty much just comes up like to this Oops, scratch the shot just going to spread that thing open a little bit kind of dirty right there a little muddy you know I wonder if you flip this axle so you can lift it <laughs> you have to weld the new track bar thing on it but yeah I bet you flip this thing and I'll or actually no that'll just make it not even have suspension impacted it on okay our shocks are in we're not loose let's uh route our fittings yeah that's how all the chevy start in my neighborhood Okay. Okay, so here's what I'm working on. I, it's kind of hard to run this line up, you know, behind the bumper because there's a hitch in the way and there's some extra plastic in a little part of the mufflers here. But I got the air hose right here. But to keep it away from this pipe, I'm bringing it up and I'm just going to put a hole right here for the thing. And uh, that's where our fitting will go. And you can cut this line to whatever length you need and see this here little thing is not like crimped on or anything and you can move it around so it's good there and putting the lube on the o-rings helps them go right into the uh, air shock got it pretty pretty much snug it's a plastic fitting so be careful with it and then I put plenty of slack on this hose right here because when the suspension moves up and down this shock is gonna go move around a little bit so make sure you have plenty of slack. I've got this zip tied to the brake line and it's kind of, you know, it can move around but you know, it's not stretched or stressed out or anything but it is secure. I'm probably pulling my, I got my other zip tie. 
That's where the line's attached to the hitch. So we're good there. And this other side I haven't gotten to because I wanted to zip tie all that up. This is, I'm just starting on this, but I got this snug down. So it shouldn't leak, it's got some good O-rings on it, so. Um, I'm gonna put this right in behind, well I can on this one. I don't know, maybe I can. Put it right behind that bracket so it's secured. And then just kind of route it. I actually got these hoses here, I can uh, zip tie it to these and it won't flop around and then we'll just run it around to the back. It should have plenty of hose, I mean that's a lot of hose. Alright, well goodness is, there's no, uh, no leaks. Uh, these fill up really quick, by the way. I mean, I barely put my hose on there and had it like at freaking 50 PSI. So, I mean, going to 60 is pretty quick. Um, so, I got about 40 PSI in there right now. And it's really easy. You can press on that to air it out. And it will, uh, it will lift this van up with ease. So, I'm going to do that. The double O-ring thing, oh, it's great. There's just, that's genius. Okay, that's what my setup looks like. Kinda runs back past that leaf spring shackle and then kinda, kinda out of the way. And then we have, you know, our shock. Shockingly. Look at that, I love seeing brand new parts. And I did, I have the air valve in there. It's hidden. I decided I kinda wanted to keep it, you know, uh, hidden and not, you know, drill through their bumper even though they have a pretty big hole right here. I don't think it needs another hole. So just this plastic part here, I drilled a little 5 16 hole and then just put that in there. It's pretty sturdy. All the excess lines kind of zip tied up. I got it running along the trailer hitch on the top here so the hose is nice and snug in there. And then it's up and out of the way of this exhaust pipe, so it should be good as far as uh, heat goes. And then I can show you this side. It's, I'm, I'm not too happy about that. I might even just see if I can get some more slack here. And just zip tie that right there. I think that's what I'll do so it's not flopping around. So I'll do that in a sec. And then... Uh, clean up a little bit. They give you some extra o-rings and whatnot, so if you lose one, no big deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tidy that little hose up, uh, put the wheels on, and we'll put some air in it. Um, like I said in the last clip, it's pretty, they air up pretty quick, so, you know, a little bicycle pump will get these up pretty quick. So, um, yeah, we'll go for a test drive. Hopefully, it uh, should be a lot better. Okay, I'm gonna put some air in it. See if I can find my. Oh, there's a hose. Use my little air checker valve. Wow, that, that air is pretty quick. That's uh. Okay, I got it at that right height. <laughs> We're like 100 psi. Yeah, those are out quick. Okay, I got it at 25 PSI. We'll go drive around for a little bit. Oh, it doesn't go. Whoa! Hey! Wallet. Oh, yeah. The front end clunk's pretty bad. Handles a little bit better. Yeah, 
Yeah, I hear the front end clunking. I can't make it out if it's a sway bar. I'm thinking about disconnecting it on both ends and then see what what it does. It, it almost sounds like it could be a sway bar. I guess I suppose I could take the struts off and see if that's it. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't rock as much. It's still terrible, but the ride feels good. Fucking brake went. Or it could be the shock shock mounts. Okay, so freaking, uh, we're gonna do the EGR valve on this next. I am letting the engine cool down just a little bit more. We did take it for a little test drive because we did the rear shocks and we had to do the drivability test. But uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and this is really isn't that warm. Well, it's warm, but I can keep my hand on it. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to jack this baby up, pull that wheel off of there. And then now uh, I'm gonna. There was a plastic shield which is right there. I have already taken off because I've been in here checking for coolant leaks because uh, there is a particular leak on this and it's the radiator which we have a new one which we're gonna go throw on here in a little bit. But uh, we're gonna jack it up, get that wheel off there. We'll loosen up the belt, and then uh, the alternator needs to be pushed down. Uh, but since we're working with electricity, we're gonna come over to our our toy box here. And actually, sorry, my toy bag. And it appears, I think that's a 10 millimeter. Let's see, am I right? Am I right about that being a 10 millimeter? Yes, I am. So we'll get this loose and out of the way. This is the negative side. As you can tell, the positive is clearly labeled with corrosion. Get that up and at them. And then that way. So, disconnected. That way if we have to take the alternator out completely, it won't get in our way. Now, before the quick fix of doing the CGR valve, uh, worked for all about 20 miles. We had uh, cleaned this. This tube is all full of carbon. I had cleaned it out with brake cleaner and that, that helped a little bit, but this actual valve is like stuck. So, I mean, this pipe's warm, so it's letting some exhaust gas to get in there, but it's not quite closing and, and operating when it should. And um, So we're just going to go ahead and replace it. And I'll show you the new part. A lot of our new parts are uh, budget parts, so we've gotten them from eBay. Um, so like, you know, the water pump, which wasn't our initial leak for the radiator, but we're going to go ahead and just replace it anyways. Comes with a gasket, that's nice. Wheel bearing, that one's just shot on the driver's side. Anyways, this is our little EGR valve, made in China, but you know what, hey, it, it's the right part. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, this does come with a little gasket. So make sure you have that. It's a little metal gasket. But the reason why we have to move the alternator is because the way the valve is in there, the alternator covers up this bolt. So there's no way you can get that. Uh, so we need to drop the alternator down. And that way we can uh, pull those bolts out. Otherwise, it's a simple replacement. If this alternator wasn't in the way, if this was moved up maybe another inch, you could have this out in like a couple minutes and then be done. Okay, so I can't find my big Duralist ratchet to fit in that. Uh, but what I did is since I have this little dildo on the end of it, I just took my crescent wrench and pushed up and then took the belt right off the uh, compressor here. Just kind of leave it like that so we don't... Uh, it's going to be needing to change here pretty soon. But we're just going to leave it. We're on a budget. Uh, so I found the socket size. There's a... 
bolt right there I just want to loosen and it's a 15 millimeter so we'll use a short socket with a small extension with a long ratchet break it free this bolt here I'm gonna pull out all the way and I should be able to just move this back and then get at this 8 millimeter bolt okay <clears throat> oh that's gonna be a little a little bit of a tosser look at my camera lens I need to clean my lens dude I hate it when the ratchet only clicks two times and you get like a, not even a millimeter of a turn. Thanks on the bitch. Okay. Good time to spin that uh, alternator. That one sounds pretty good. Okay, and then right down there, that's our other bolt. Uh, let's see. An extension. And a ratchet might do it. I don't know, let's find out. Use just a regular socket, long ratchet, and then bend the fucking power cord back a little bit and you can get down in there. sees on that that's for sure <laughs> now she comes but Give me my, give me my bolt, bitch. Okay. Probably would have been a great, a great idea to leave it in, but eight millimeter ratchet and a little socket thing. Oh yeah, that just, that's, that's. Oh, it's a cute little thing. It came right there. I'm tired of just, I'm tired of waiting. Man, ah oh shit, I'm fucking scared to piss on me. This is the old bastard. Actually, you now the quality of the uh, new one it looks about the same as the original. Can we tell the difference? Not really a difference. Well, they're all the same. Closed. Closed. Yep. All right. Let's slam this thing in there.
Okay, snug. Oh, the hard part. This is the hard part. Oh, there we go. Lock that. And that spark plug boot that you pulled out. You want to put that shit back in there. Alright, and then you're done. No, uh, yeah, you're pretty much done at this point. Other than putting that belt back on there. But I'm going to leave it off because i got to do the water pump on it. So, uh, that's pretty much it. When you are uh, get your car put all back together, make sure you uh, run your scanner and delete that at check engine light. Uh, it may actually go off by itself, but just delete it before you start it. Okay, so, what's wrong with this thing? I'll show you what's wrong. Uh, this is actually caused by an accident that this thing endured a, about a year or so ago. And ever since then, uh, this wheel bearing is shot. And I chafed my nipple here, so it hurts. So, and then... Um, this you know, movement all the way around is a wheel bearing. Uh, in fact, if you actually watch your brake rotor as you do this, uh, you'll see the brake rotor move too, and that is also attached to your hub. So, we're going to uh, pull this wheel off. And you know what I do with the wheels? I do this. Take them and put them underneath the car now. And it's funny, this wheel bearing here has a replaced or has a uh, newer uh, stud on it because we snapped it off. I'm going to take this cotter pin out. Come on, you can do it. There's a spring here. Oh, Sorry about the terrible lens. Let's see. Ford Explorer. Ford Explorer. Yeah. That is a one quarter. Or one and a quarter. Okay, set that aside with your stuff. So that axle will move freely now. Um, and basically all I did is I had removed this, when I removed this bearing to do the job that we had to do, uh, I just pulled the bolts as they were in here and then just came right out. So let's see, can I get this? Oh yeah. not have air tools when I worked on this fan. Heh. Check that out. Okay, Rick Rotor. Looks okay. It's a little worn down. We've got a few miles on this. So now, what size was this? Damn water. Yeah, ABS sensor has to come off. It's a little 10 millimeter. You're gonna, you're gonna be pissed at how easy this hub's gonna come out. This should just come out just like that. <laughs> this is the new one. I just compared it to these. They're the same. Um, one thing we will do is uh, make sure our plug nuts go in there and they go in there beautifully. Oh, yeah. It's a high quality part. I don't plan on taking this ever apart, apart ever again. 
So, we're going to do the deed. Okay, so, on this old caravan, we're moving our toolbox out of the way, we have a brand new radiator, we need to inspect this for damage, this uh, does appear to be the correct, well, we'll find out if it's the correct one or not. I'm getting a little sore. We've already done uh, rear shocks, a wheel bearing, an AGR valve on this thing, and now we're working on a radiator, a water pump, and a thermostat. So I'm just going to cut all this tape off. I'm actually knocking this stuff out pretty quick. I haven't been not necessarily the most familiar with Chrysler bins, but I've been picking it up. Sorry, I've got uh, uh, black submarines or whatever stuck in my hand. I need my shears. These are very handy to have. Uh, you can get these at Home Depot for like 16, 16 bucks. Oh, that is our radiator. That looks, that looks beautiful. Yeah, radiator cap. It's got a brand new one. 
all in the right position. I've been getting some scrap out of this stuff. I got all kinds of cool stuff I can take to this junk, the drop yard. Oh, and this has a pre-stone cap on it. That's cool. They got this for 58 bucks on eBay. It's a steal. Oh yeah, this looks great. It's not damaged. Shit, I should look at eBay for a radiator for my truck. I need a new radiator. This looks great. No damage, nothing. Just so I won't make a mess, I put this, uh, for crying out loud. Alright, I put this little hose up on the little thing in there for the, uh, drain valve. So that we can not make a freaking mess. And this is off a Ford truck, which is the funny part. piece off. Okay. Go up top. And get my light. My grandmother got me this. It was pretty awesome. It's not perfect. Get my big ass hand down there. Dump that right in there. Let's see how far we can go with it. Oh yeah. Get that crap out of there. Now a tool I'll get to test is this. This bad boy right here. On these freaking hose clamps. I hate these things. You only hate them if you don't have the right tool. And for crying out loud, I need like a cart to put my tools. That's what I'm gonna get next. A cart to put my freaking tools. There, I got you up on zip ties. We're still trickling out fluid. Get my hand down there. Turn it some more. Yeah, she's coming up. Oh, yeah. It looks like there's oil floating around in there, but it's actually the, uh, there's already some oil in that pan that I have down there, so. Yeah, it's gonna look a little scary. She's dumping out pretty good. We're about halfway on the radiator. It looks pretty nasty in there. So. What's nice is I can get my little thing in here. You know what I don't like about it? <laughs> it's just barely gonna work. But you know what? I'm pretty freaking happy with that. that. That worked great.
I did it. Yay. This is going to start leaking one way or another. Okay, so I, I was going to show you this, but it ended up being kind of a, a bitch. Make sure that's nice and clean. Good enough for me. Uh, basically, to get the pulley out, I just used brought the motor down a little bit and used the crowbar, got it in between the tensioner and the frame and got that out. So basically you can put that back in the way you came, got it out. Here's our little uh, water pump. Impeller looks pretty good. It's not exactly uh, ready to leak, but the gasket's old enough. So that's that. Look at all these old ass parts broken. Worn out, going to leak soon. And look, now we have a metal impeller. This feels like it's turning in honey. And this old one here is, well, it was gonna leak pretty soon. I mean, this, this spins pretty easy. Oh man, what a lot of work. But I got the pump in there. I, I was able to get my little baby uh, air ratchet in there with a 10 millimeter. So if you get one of these little baby air ratchets, you'll be able to get up in there with that ratchet and get this stuff done quick. That's what I was able to do, putting it back in there. And then I get a crowbar and put it between the frame here and that tensioner. And you can uh, pull on the crowbar and it'll, it'll push the engine away from the frame. And they'll let you slip that pulley out of there uh, once the engine is lowered. And it's, it's pretty much the reverse process to get that back in there. So now, um, just a little bit of coolant come out of the uh, pump area. Crescent wrench works great for the uh, tensioner. that guy out of there get some tools out of here uh, I am gonna once I get this bolted back up I'm gonna put that splash shield up if I have I think I have all the stuff for it um, new radiator in new EGR just change oil a little while ago put a new gasket in there change the transmission fluid uh, it's, we had a, did a whole spark plug tune-up new wires new air filter and now a new water pump, radiator, shocks, all that good stuff. It's a happy little camper. So what we're going to do is now jack the motor up. Just to where we line up a little bit. Not too far. Let's do something like that. We'll just run the bolts through there and I'll suck them right up. to fiddle with it a little bit okay, so supposedly she has coolant in here but I don't think it's gonna be enough okay coolant somewhere back there I'm gonna have to climb up through in the car with my dirtiness. Uh, 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 fucking van. Oh, hey. There's some coolant. Coffee stuff in here. Well, uh, we're gonna need to go get some coolant. <sighs> yeah, that's not gonna be enough. I 
that's okay. I'll be like, yeah. That's twenty dollars for the coolant. Just be like, oh yeah. Go get the money out of the out from the thing. Fuck me. I'm mean, pinching my fingers. Getting my back jabbed in, my face fucking hit with stuff. Oh, and there's no leather, so you can't slither in and out. What a workout. Uh, I'm gonna do. I do not have any coolant. I'm gonna put that coolant in it. Give her some Dex Cool. Uh, I'm gonna have to go buy a thing of coolant. 50 50 pre diluted. Okay. Still got a couple of things left to do, but I got the snorkel thing in, the electrical connection for the plug, or for the uh, intake temperature sensor. Got our hose put back on. We have all our fan connections down there are hooked up and locked in place. Oh, um, oh yeah, that would be of great help to put the bolts for the alternator in. Otherwise, there's plenty of tension on the <laughs> poop. All right, we're just running the thing. I got the heater on full. Got the temp on full. Fan doesn't necessarily need to be on, but I have it on anyways, just in case it's like a weird computer thing where it's not going to run the heater core while the fan's on. So, I bought the mix coolant stuff. I mix up some with that little jug. <laughs> and I'm just running it, checking for leaks. I did spill a little bit. That puddle in the back is from earlier. It's just gurgling that down. I'll just keep running it until I don't see any more air bubbles come up. Okay, so far so good. Bled it out for like maybe 10 minutes, just running. Warmed up pretty quick. Fans came on for a little bit. Squeezed the radiator hose, they went off. Uh, it hasn't taken any coolant yet, so. Heater works really freaking great. Uh, I'm just gonna move this a little bit to reset the suspension and then I'm going to put some air in their tires and then we'll go for a cruise freaking A happy van I think they need a new turn signal lamps they're a little shitty looking well, good news is our EGR valve is still off. We do have a microscopic leak in the air, bag, air suspension somewhere. So, but that's okay. I had 25 PSI in it when I started working on this. And it's got about, had about 10 in it and I put 30 in it. Well, I don't want to put my seatbelt on yet. Uh, yeah, chicken really has stayed up so far. I put some air in the tires, about 10 psi for each wheel. Oh, it's a happy van. We'll see if our brakes still grind. We still have the clunk. Phone, wallet, temperature still good. Ah, damn it. Lights. Freaking water all in here and everything. Okay. Move this little bath in.
freaking when I went to go get coolant, I I got pulled over because I was making my turn. Uh... I don't know what the emergency people here. Oh shit. neighbor next door. Uh-oh. I hope his wife's okay. Yeah, the fuel light came on. If I had money, I would go get her some gas. Freaking transmission's hopping around. It's got to relearn everything. Oh, fuck. Stuff. Okay, wipers. Oh yeah, it's gotta relearn every freaking thing. Okay, what's our 14.7 mile? I kept that. Okay, I drove it around, put some gas in it, and I got the uh, check engine light back, but now it's a different code. It used to be uh, circuit high, but it says circuit range performance. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to exit out of this. Sorry about the dinger. We're going to have to listen to it for a while. Freaking some of that gasket stuff that I scraped off onto the... Uh, Uh, onto the engine, it just is freaking burning it. So, no codes for the transmission, that's good. Well, I will uh, keep this with me as I may need it. So, anyways, I'm gonna go deliver the vehicle. Um, I don't see really any other problems. If anything, our check engine lights are within the EGR area. I know it fixed one code. It fixed the high circuit problem, which was an issue. Uh, but then now there's a, another one that's popped up, so just reset it, drive it around. Combined MPG, not too bad for just tooling around. Oh man, I got it so nice and cozy in here. Let's see if that check engine light will come back on. It rides a lot better with the new shocks, handles a lot better. It was like, you could really get this thing rocking, but it'll rock a little bit because it doesn't have a rear sway bar. But, uh, now it's definitely a lot better. Freaking no gas light. I'm crossing my fingers on the check engine light, but... Hmm, I'll have to look up that, uh, what was it, PO0404 or something? We'll take a look at that and see what's going on. If it comes back, Look it up. <clears throat> but she's running a lot better. The wheel bearing took out a lot of crap in the steering. We still have some uh, brake noise from the, the crappy brake pads we we're using, so it sounds like they're grinding, but they're not grinding. It's just, that's just how, what they sound like when you come to a stop. It sounds terrible. I found out our outer tie rod end on the driver's side is shut. It's still attached, but it's shot. I hate it when people in their Hondas come rolling through at five miles an hour. Um, suspension's a lot better. It's got 
a little bit added uh, capacity. Well, not really capacity, but uh, um, what's the word? Damn e-brake! It dings every time. I think it's a check engine line. The uh, freaking freaking uh, the air shocks don't necessarily add capacity, but what they do is they just keep the car from squatting. So that's why we put them in there. So and run a trailer and whatnot, it'll keep them from sagging pretty good. But I gotta go because I'm driving, so bye.